Okay, for you today I have three more mouthpieces to compare. I have three Babbitt made mouthpieces here. One is a metal Meyer, which is a Meyer in name only, has nothing to do with the original Meyer company or their mouthpiece designs. Uh, I have a Guy Hawkins and also a Wolf Tane. Okay, these I believe all three. I, I can't guarantee it from the era. I believe all three of these are made by Babbitt. They are now, but I don't know if the older versions of the uh, Guy Hawkins and Wolf Tane were, were made by them or not. I got to thinking about this because a, a client sent in this Meyer uh, for a reface and a cleanup, and I had hadn't seen one of these up close before, and I found out it is related to these two. You can see some differences in the body. Um, yeah, these both are nickel plated. This looks more like a chrome plating to me because it's shinier, but it could just be newer nickel. Um, I've seen some a lot more of the Wolf Tanes and the Guy Hawkins, uh, and they vary uh, depending on when they were made. Bike plates are a little different, you know, length on here. The thing that makes these really all related is their construction of the baffle going into the chamber, into the throat area. They all have similar throats. Uh, they're a little, kind of like a clarinet uh, throat. They're a little, their straight side walls are a little V'd going into a round counterbore. But the baffle extends all the way, let me get a pointer. The baffle, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in from the bore until I feel the baffle of the side walls the baffle extends to about here going into the chamber sloping in okay now that's difficult to machine that way you can um, you know cast these blanks but I believe they probably machined part of this baffle and the the way they do that is they actually have uh, a, a piece here that is brazed on it's a square piece that is not there when they're constructing the baffle and then they later put that piece on there this thin piece and uh, braze it in place and it's like a cap and they're on all three of these mouthpieces they're in different thicknesses I don't know if that's uh, part of the spec or just a production variation this one here is about thirty thousandths thick if I go it's not a great way to measure it but it's uh, you can get an idea you just kinda drop your the end of your caliper probe down there to see how thick it is. Now, when I got 23 this time, you know, again, I'm eyeballing it. And if I kind of do it again, I get 37. So it's really hard to get, but it's around 30. This one's around a little thicker. It's around 50 thousandths, and then and and that's the guy Hawkins, right? Did I get that right? Yep. And then this is the Meyer, and it's about 70 thousandths thick, which is very thick. Um, what I do as part of a reface is undercut that because it makes my mouthpiece blow freer. But in this case, um, it's, there's no need to. It's so thin, they've achieved essentially a, a, a fairly uh, thin edge there that uh, makes it blow freer without having to do some, you know, hand finishing in there. Of course, they've had to put that, you know, piece of metal on there. When you get one of these that the plating's worn off, you can really see it. Uh, clearly, but on this mire, I can see it. I'm, I'll mark it with uh, how long it is with a marker here, because I can see some pitting uh, coming through the plating, and and this cap goes from about there to here. And my white marker's not showing that way. There we go. There to there, and again, it's only you know. 70,000 thick. You can also see it from the window. You can see where there's a little wear, or you can see actually the edge, you know, where they meet looking inside the mouthpiece. But, it, you know, like, if, like I said, I'm theorizing it allows them to machine that baffle sloping deep into the chamber and then they clean it up. But it is a, a second production step, but uh, one that Babbitt's probably used to doing, so they just go across their mouthpiece line, you know, get three three different models out of the same 
uh, construction method. Now the other differences I've seen in these is the baffle. Uh, even though the side walls are the same and the, and the throat area, um, this uh, Meyer had a short straight baffle. It was a little crooked so I've worked on it, but it goes only to about here um, on this uh, um, Guy Hawkins. It goes a little longer. And then on this particular wolf, wolf tain, it's actually all the way down kind of the middle of the window. I've seen these with arched baffles that are smooth without a kink in them, but I, I you know, off the top of my head, I can't tell you whether they were at, done after they were made or just uh, a different ear, era of the um, production. So um, there it is, a short video just to show you how these cousins are related and a little wrinkle in uh, a different way that you can make a, a mouthpiece construction.